Now that we've learned how to create a user in the database, what we want to do now is we want to display the users on the front end in the view. And then what we can do is we can click into each user, we can update them and we can also delete them. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go back into your project and we want to create a new route. And this route will be showing a view which will be for showing all of the users that are in our database. So if we go back into our routes, we'll do route, get, and then we'll do users. And that is basically going to be the route that when you visit in your browser, it's going to show a view which will show all of the users. We're going to point that route to the user controller again. And then we are going to create a new method in our user controller. We'll just make it uh, show users. Now you'll notice we already have one there. I'm just going to make that as show user and then go back to our user controller and take the plural out of there. And then if we go down and create a new function called show users, we don't need to pass any uh, arguments into this function or into this method because we're, it's just going to be a view that shows everything. So the first thing we want to do is we want to return the view and we haven't created the view yet. So if we go into our views resources and views folder and we create a new view and we'll just call it all users. Actually, we'll just call it users.blade.php and we probably want to copy over the scaffolding from the other pages. So we'll just grab it from the home page, paste it in there and just remove this. Okay, so now we have a users.blade.php. So if we go back into our users controller and we make it point to users, what will happen is that when we visit the users route, it's going to point us to the users view. So let's go and see what happens. Now you'll notice I'm getting an error for an unexpected end of file, which is because I didn't put a semicolon here and we'll hit another refresh. Okay, so there we go, a blank page. Now that we've set up the view, we want to pass the data into the view. We want to pass every single user that's in our database. So what we do is we create a new variable, whatever you want to call it, we'll just call it users. And then we will refer to this model, which is user. So in Eloquent, we just do user, and then we can just do get. And that is basically going to get every single user in the database. And then what you can do is you can just compact the users variable into our view. If we go into our view now, we can do a for each uh, loop, which will then uh, loop through every user we have. So for each users, so this variable is obviously referring to what we've compacted and sent through to the view as user. And we'll do end for each as well. And then let's just put user, f name, user, l name, and user email. Let's go back to our view and refresh it. There we go. So we have a few users here, all the users that we've done tests with. So maybe it will be good to pretty it up and put it inside a table. Let's just create a basic table. T body and then TR, T row, and then the columns TD and we'll do three of them. We'll put the first name there the last name in another column, and then the email in another column. Then we'll just do the header of our table, T head, and then we'll do TR, and then TH. So that will be first name, last name, and email. Great, let's go and have a look at it. There we go. So we have our table there. It doesn't look good, uh, but we'll just work with it now until we start importing Bootstrap into our theme. I'll just do a style and make it width equals uh, 800 pixels. 
and I will also make everything aligned to the left. Good, okay, so, all right, one thing you'll notice though, we've done a for each loop and we've even looped through the header headers of the table. So let's remove this for each and take it down here to the T body. And what that will do is it then it will just repeat every row instead of the table. As you can see now, we have a table with every single user that's in our database. Now we have the ability to set up paging, which is quite easy to do in Laravel. Laravel has its own inbuilt paging functionality. So if you say had 50,000 users in your web application, you definitely don't want to load the page with, with all those users showing on the page. You want to paginate it. So maybe you show 20 users at a time and then you can click next page to view the next ones. So to do that, all you need to do is go back into your user controller and where it says users get, what you want to do is you want to do user paginate and then however many you want to show on that page, say 20. Or in our case, because we don't have 20, we'll just do say three. And then you can take away this get. So that basically will do a request to the user model. It will check for three users and it will paginate them. Um, and then what we can do on the front end, we can import or include a little script that will that comes with Laravel that will paginate those items. So if we go and check out how it looks now, you should see that it will only show three records. And then to create the paging, all we need to do in Laravel is go into our users view and add in a blade syntax, which is users or yet yeah, users, sorry, because users is what we're passing in from the view. So if we're passing this in to our view, we use that users and then links. And that's a function from Laravel that will automatically paginate everything for us. So if we go back into our project and hit refresh, you should see now the links come up. So we can hit two, three, and it all shows the in a paginated format. Now, it obviously doesn't look good like this and Laravel automatically make it work properly with Bootstrap. So when we include Bootstrap into our theme, you'll see that it will look much nicer. Now that we have the ability to view all of the users in our database using pagination, we wanna be able to edit those specific users or even delete them. So to do that, let's go back into our project and let's go and create a route. Now you'll notice we created a route earlier in the in this tutorial series where we showed a specific user. I'm just gonna delete that route because I wanna start it from scratch. So now what we wanna do is let's create a new get route and we'll make it go to users, edit, actually users view, and then the ID will be the uh, argument. And then we're gonna point it to the user controller and we're going to uh, make it go to a method called view user, which we haven't created yet. Let's go into here. First of all, I'm going to delete the show user one because we don't want that anymore. And we'll go to the bottom of our web.php routes file, sorry, to our user controller and we'll do public function view user. We will accept the argument, which is from the argument here. And we will then find the user. So to do that, we just have to do user. So we can create a variable, whatever you want to call it. User equals user, find or fail ID. Now, if you don't know what find or fail is, it will basically check if that user exists. If they don't, it will send through a 404 error. Once the user has been found, let's return a view of, let's call it a uh, view user and we will then compact it. We'll compact the user variable into that so it will pass through, it, pass through to the view. Let's go and create our view now. So if you go to resources and views and we create a new file, we'll call that view user.blade.php and let's just copy over uh, something from our previous views. So let's just copy that and uh, now let's go into our project and see if it works. So we don't have a link here yet, but if we just do user view and then the ID, 
it's not found. Maybe I did the route wrong. Let's have a look. It's users view. Okay, so users view. There we go. We come to a blank page, but it's working. So now we can go into that. I'll just make this nice and clean. We'll go into our view user blade PHP file and we'll just do user F name and user L name. Let's make that a heading one. And hit refresh. Now the name comes up. But we don't want to just show a name and that's it. We want to show the ability to edit that specific user. So what we can do is we can just create another form in here. Uh, to make things quicker, we could go into our uh, create user.blade file and grab the form out of there. So the form we had earlier. And then we could go into our view user blade and paste it inside there. Now we need to change it up a bit here. First thing we want to do is we want to take away this action because we're going to create a new action. Keep the CRSRF field. Um, now let's change this old to actually reflect the user details. So we'll do user F name, user L name, user email, user password, user notes. Uh, now, because it's a text area, we can't actually do the value like that. We actually have to do it like this. And that's a mistake I made on the create user page as well. We need to take away this value because you can't do a value with a text area and you have to just place it within side the text area there. Okay, and then we'll just change the button to something like edit user or save changes. Let's go and refresh it and you should see that all of the data is pre-filled in here. And uh, now we want to be able to just save the changes. So to save them, let's create a new route, which will be a post route. And that will then find the user in the database and then do the changes necessary and then save the changes. To check if a user email already exists in the database, it's really, really straightforward. As you know, we've created a form validation request called update user. Let's go into our form validation request here and let's just make a small rule here next to the email field, unique users. So what that's gonna do is say it's a unique, it must be a unique email and it must refer to the users table in your database to check if the email is unique. So let's save that, go back into our project now and let's also go into our PHP My Admin and check what other emails exist so we can try and use those emails. So let's go to users and you'll notice, okay, let's try and use this email here. I'm gonna try and update myself with that. Hit save changes and it doesn't work. So it's rejecting you from creating the user but it's not actually showing us anything. It's not showing us a message. So let's go back into our project and our validation.blade.php file, which is here, is only showing the messages for success. So remember in the in our earlier videos, we created the ability to show errors as well. Let's go over to our create user.blade and you'll notice that our errors are here. Let's copy them and put them inside of our validation.blade file. And what that is going to do now is it's going to work on every single page. So we will just go and try that again. So this is the email that we want and we'll paste that in there and hit save. You'll notice here the email has already been taken. So that will stop us from updating the user. Now another problem we might face though is that if we try and hit save changes with the existing user and when you hit save changes it's pretty much submitting their email again. So what's happening is it's also saying that the email has been taken. So we need to somehow override Laravel to say that if you're in a specific user and you update them, then don't check for the email validation if it hasn't changed. Because what, what essentially is happening is that you're, you're saving the user 
and it's checking if that email exists. And because it already exists with that user in the database, it's not allowing you to update the user at all. It's just coming back that the email has been taken as well. So to get around this, we have to tell Laravel to ignore the validation on a user if the email is the same. So let's go back into our project and go into the update user request. And let's add this to our email required field. So we've already made it so that it's unique to the users table. And then we're gonna make it to check the email field. And we're gonna ask it to ignore the ID of the user. So remember how we're passing the ID through the argument here in the request? We're going to tell it to ignore that. So we'll do request ID. And we'll do a dot there as well. So essentially, it's going to check if the email uh, the email is required. It's going to check if the email is unique to the user's table. And, if, and it's also going to check if the email uh, is already belonging to that specific ID. And if it is, it's gonna allow it to pass. So let's hit save and let's try it again. So save changes. As you can see, that user has been updated successfully, even though technically that email already exists in the database. Um, then if we try and save the user with the email here, oops, we'll just save changes. The email has already been taken. Okay, so in this video, we have learned how to show all of the users using pagination and also how to edit a user. Now what we're going to do in the next video is I'll show you how to delete a user.